Thank you for joining us today on the program Hell Delivery. I am Adisa Walsawage and uh, we're going to be looking at heart failure today on the program. Joining me is Dr. Barry Ojo, a consultant, family physician. He's the one we're going to be talking with today on the program. So quickly, Dr. Ojo, nice to have you on the program. Yes, it's okay, so heart failure, what is heart failure? Yes, heart failure is not, it's not like the term the failing heart, that is simply defined as uh, inability for the heart to uh, take blood to the many parts of the body. So what that means is that no blood comes from the lower part of the body towards the heart. Then when the heart is failing, the heart is not unable to transmit or expose blood to the main part of the body to carry out its functionality. And in that case, it could be systemic, it could be systemic failure, it could be diastolic failure. But in, in types of heart failure, you have the right hand failure, right sided heart failure, mm. and the left hand is still like right sided heart failure. Okay. But the left sided heart failure is only about the lungs, it's going to be the pulmonary circulation. Okay. The way at which the blood flows around the lung to the respiratory system. While the right hand failure is, is about the general the systemic circulation. But having said all this, what is most important is what are the causes? What could be responsible for heart failure? For heart failure. Because one of the fastest killers. In America, it's responsible for over 70% of deaths. Of death. But the first is that a lot of studies have been done on heart failure. They have discovered that most of the first is more known. But if you look at the risk factors for common disease and the respiratory of heart failure, of course, heart disease and the heart disease in the heart. That's why a lot of heart disease patients run the risk of heart failure. Then when we're talking about types of heart failure, we're talking about the discipline heart failure. They forgot that the discipline heart failure means that a lot of heart disease patients at, at the level of this CPM Okay. So it is when you come to regular check that those can be discovered. We discover. We talk about the investigation shop. But because from this CPM they have been able to come and establish that. And when you say congested cardiac failure, what that means is that both the left and the right side of the heart is already failing. Hmm. And most times the common part of heart failure is the left heart failure, but you talk about the failure, left ventricular heart failure. But the service will say that a patient and you to have right side heart failure. And also calm down with the left side of the heart failure. That's why it's always good to come to hospital. What are the features of heart failure? Because heart failure is so common in the general population that it has killed sex and population. Because if you look at coronavirus, for instance, it's only about, about lung failure, where the virus is going to attack the lung, the lungs are paralyzed. Of course, why the, where the lungs is paralyzing, because well, there will not be pulmonary failure. So because the lungs, the separation of the lungs will be affected. So they said that not necessarily from the collapse of the lung, but because once the lung is collapsed, of course, they have to fail. So what are the common features of heart failure? How do you know that patient is coming to have it? First of all, it could be difficulty in breathing. So it now depends on which side of, of the, the heart is going to say the right side or is it the other, or both. Both is actually very common. The patient can be having difficulty in uh, breathing. The patient can be having or uh, not able to sleep or it's some person they can't sleep in life flat or on top of that. So it's possible to spill that down with this now, which is difficult to cut in breathing, but there could be swelling of the legs. Of the legs. So the patient can come up with what we call six man natural disease. What that means is that the patient wakes up the night, panting for breath. Okay. Of course, the patient can come with the legs swelling. Some can have even uh, abdominal cerebral ascites. Mm -hmm. So, but so far it to say that in diagnosis of heart failure, when you now do a physical general examination and you do a systemic design, the heart examination, you will now discover that the patient can be having. Uh, the third heart sound, because the common heart sound is the first and second heart sound. Second. But when a patient has a third, uh, third heart sound, most likely to be the heart failure, even though in the very early, the third heart sound can be normal. The first heart, the fourth heart sound is completely abnormal in all that way of patient. They can look, they will call a particular reflex, where, what does the medical term, where these are very exact features that you can look at in the heart, mm. and the patient the patient can come out with this heart failure. Mm. Then again, you look at the lungs. They have not seen when they examine the patient, because the patient can have increased respiratory activity. So, the patient can also have uh, tachypnea, or viral increased respiratory activity. Then, when you now you uh, spot the lens, it's called the lens, it's uh, like crackles of gravitation, which means there are fluid in the heart. That's what I want to talk about management very, very briefly. You see, I'll come and talk about things that we can, be, we can do for the patient. Okay, let's talk yeah. about that fluid in the heart. Exactly. Yes, fluid in the heart, fluid in the lungs. What that means? Sorry. Fluid in the lungs is plural uh, right function, which means there's fluid in the lungs. The, the fluid in the heart is pericardial effusion. So what that means is that because of the rate at which the heart is already not able to uh, expose blood away from the heart, so most likely there will not be fluid accumulation. Mm. So very, very, very common. You can see it come on the patient that is in fluid. But look at that when you're talking about treatment. Mm. 
the Holy Spirit is what I you know this presentation. When a patient is in established heart failure, most times it causes one patient. So as I went to the like severe time, once the patient is admitted, I call you now to be relevant in the description. Mm -hmm. And what I remember in the description. First of all, you talk about the routine description, talk about the analysis, the food lockdown, the food, of course. All, of the, all other things like the lipid profile, the kidney status of the patient, of course, the liver function, the patient of the patient. Patient can be having what we call the paternal syndrome. Patient can be having both kidney and liver problems, which leads to the heart failure. But patient can be having things like uh, a lung problem, like we talk about renal virus, for example, or even GP, that can be responsible for the heart failure. Okay. So we call, 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 it's called call for renal. Patient has a lung problem and it leads to heart failure. Patient the patient has what we call prochytitis or even Prokaitis or even nobody money. A patient now has heart failure. Okay. So that's what we call for renal. But in terms of investigation, what is key in heart failure? Of course, after those blood tests, you have to do image. When you do a chest x for the patient, mm. of course, ECG is very key. For very the key. To the central echo. But in all this, how do you manage a patient with heart failure, which is a point of discussion? First of all, like we said earlier, we go to admit the patient. And once you admit the patient, we now bring in, but of course, you have to look at the underlying future because. Things like HIV AIDS, things like local pneumonia, things like a lot of even malnutrition can be responsible for heart failure. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you don't want to trace one of the cause. What would be responsible for this individual heart failure? Of course, high blood pressure is going to come one common uh, etiology in terms of a failure of that. So we look at the blood pressure. We are going to now look at blood pressure, cause control the blood pressure with the common antihypertensis. Okay. I don't see compatible exercise because are very key. Mm -hmm. Because in heart failure, in part of physiological time, we don't go a lot to discuss. The renin, I could just say, adosterial system, the RAS system is very important. So you're not bringing those drugs that go to stop the movement of adosterol from the adosterol one to adosterol two. So that brings the adosterol one. Okay. The ACA, the adosterol compatible exercise, we call the ARBs, the adosterol percent of blockers, we call the adosterol blockers and every other necessary antibiotics that will be responsible for that patient. So you look at the, of course, you're going to oxygenate the patient, the patient will be having low oxygenation. Or because of the inability to take blood away from the heart, of course, there will be poor oxygenation. And don't forget that some of this, this situation where the patient is in heart failure, the patient can also cancel run the risk of having brain failure. So that's why the patient has to be oxygenated. But with oxygenation, so that if the, the, the brain does not die. Yes. Then, of course, we're looking at the leg swelling and all that. So the patient can be placed on diuretic. And all other medication that the patient requires. Otherwise, if you suspect that you call by the pleural effusion, when they feel the loss, of course, you can give uh, diuretic. Of course, if it's very massive, you can also put a uh, cut or cut where a patient is. You incite some chest tissue to chest to the extract the fluid. The then they can infect the process in the heart. So that will become a bit very cardiac. So, patient with heart failure can come with inflammation of the heart. Mm -hmm. So, you have to bring in. High high ceiling antibiotics in particular situation. Okay, but then it's anemic. The patient can also have anemic heart failure. That's it. But every time it's malnourished, you have any, any form of anemia that can make the patient have low blood pressure. So they have heart failure. So in that kind of situation, because the patient is having anemia heart failure, you have to transfuse the patient. Mm. You have to you have to resuscitate that patient yeah, by way of raising the blood pressure. So blood transfusion can come here. Of course, you have to do if a patient's treatment of heart failure is individualized. Yes. So you are treating that patient according to the way. So heart failure, heart attack, are they one at the same? No, they are not one at the same. Because heart attack, we are looking at things like myocardial infarction. We are looking at other things that can be responsible for the heart that is so, that suddenly failing. But in heart failure, they say it's more of a system. Of it's just the only about the circulation. Blood is not able to live. Enough blood is not living. The heart is not able The cardiac output, the strong volume, the total peripheral is and then the heart attack. Mm. The electrical and the and the and the, uh, the electrical and physiological activities of the heart fail yes, something. Of course, most of the cause are known. But the, 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 the analogy between heart attack and heart failure is that the patient can be having underlying pathology, like a patient's heart disease, that can that can that can trigger it. The patient in heart attack can have what called arrhythmias that can make some of the valves not work, but you can go and do something. If I know those two, most of the time heart attack is more Half failure patient is going, so when there's an intervention, although in heart attack, if a patient is not recognized in the with all your all your machines, the AEDs and all that, patient can be associated there. They are not they are not the same thing. Same. But what is most important is that when you are when you want to manage a patient with heart failure, first of all, you are looking at primary prevention. Primary prevention prevention means that patient is a patient. So a patient that the life so the lifestyle 
modification is very key for that patient. The diet, exercises that are compatible, of course, no smoking because so smoking is a risk factor for all pathologies. Of course, patients will have to cut down on alcohol. Of course, things like sleep hygiene, adequate sleep hygiene, because the patient, an adult sleeps for between five to six hours, so six hours per night, that's a good sleep hygiene. Of course, for new children that are newborn can sleep as much as for them. So you okay. must have everything. The sleep hygiene is age group. Now, you must go, you now look at the blood pressure, keep blood pressure down from the truth. Patients have a good lifestyle, of course, primary prevention. Because you are not preventing complications by having a physician as a patient. So that is also a risk factor to have food. Oh, then you will also now have a secondary prevention. Oh, patient is, has recurrent CC, we call it congestive cardiac failure. Then what you will now do to prevent the patient from going to tertiary, to go into complications. How do you manage the situation with this patient? So that patient will not go to complications like even the heart attack we're talking about now, or even other respiratory failure. I told you that heart failure is only about respiratory circulation and consistent circulation. So you are going to put the patient to be on regular checkup. You just come to the hospital regularly. You have to visit the cardiologist, of course. Cardiologists are the ones in charge of the heart. Of course, all other uh, professional bodies have gone to the social work. So if a patient is, has been diagnosed with heart failure, either through X-ray or through the pathetic patient, it is always important to go to the regular check. Okay. It's, a very, it's a fast care. The heart failure is not a death center. Death. They can kill that. I mean, of course, you have to lifestyle is very important. So exercise because there are some persons that have heart failure already and they are involved in difficult astronomical activities. You know, so you go to the play long tennis for several hours. And they are not supposed, they are not supposed to do that. Of course, these are things that enforce a lot of activities of the heart. You know, blood moves from the kidney more back to the heart and there's already destruction. So it is advisable to the public that once you get no heart failure, you have to discipline, you should be there self discipline You want to search for gratification because what that means is that you have left, okay, for instance, somebody will walk a little distance and is already tired. Is it fatigue with it? Of course, the heart is already failing. So any exercises that have to be very strong should be avoided. It is very key. Of course, you do your regular check, check your sugar level, attend to the hospital, do your regular blood pressure check, stay on your medication. But that's the essence of this discussion. Yes. If certain individuals at home, this thing that's not at home, should be because if, if someone does not have an illness, a relation or a spouse or may, a may, may just have, home, yes. It's always good to pass the message that once you know, the patient has congestive cardiac failure, it is not a death sentence. It's an avenue to, to death because there's always this, this complication. So it's a co mobility, it's a co mobility situation. So in order to avoid mortality, you must have your regular medication being taken. Then they have go to your, have your regular uh, clinic attendance. Of course, in your lifetime, not to really adjust so many of these things mm -hmm. that may not lead to the worst situation. Again, the, the person will not be someone that already had that failure. Can you come oh. out of the failure? Of course, okay. yes. Because someone that had that failure, once it's a, it's a manageable disease, it's a manageable situation. Okay. It's actually a complication on its own. It's not only diagnosis. There's so many conditions are responsible for it. So if to all those conditions like the apathesis they are well, they they are all well managed. Yeah, those are well managed. So at the end of the day, of course, some medication. Some medication can be a risk factor to have it. See, like I said, most of these are like anti-cancer drugs, you know, for chemotherapy. So the pathophysiology is there. So you must now avoid those things that can complicate your situation. Mm. Because half failure is reversible. Okay. Yes, that's what we are saying. That's not that thing. Exactly. That's then it is not reversible that much. You have to be attentive <laughs> regularly. Okay. To be able to all right, uh, this is uh, all time we permit us to take. We want to thank you for being part of it. All right, Doc, we're very happy that um, you're with us today. We're hoping that uh, we will continue with this topic soonest because we need to take calls from you. We want to hear from you. And, of course, we want to do other things that we didn't do on the program today. So we'll see you again on Monday. Thank you for being with us. Thank you, Doctor, for sharing. All right, bye for now.